Welcome back. Grant County is looking for a person to serve on the Civil Service Commission. The commission issues tests for people applying for a position with the Grant County Sheriff's Office and determining the most qualified candidate. The commissioners also hear and investigate complaints made by deputies. The commission meets at least once every three months, generally between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. The members aren't paid but may have expenses reimbursed. People can find applications by clicking on the Request for Volunteers link on the Grant County website, www.grantcountywa.gov. Applications will be accepted until the position is filled. For more information, contact the Grant County Commissioner's Office. State auditors did not find any problems during their audit of the City of George. The Washington State Auditor's Office recently released its 2011, 2012, and 2013 audit reports for the city. The state auditors conduct regular audits of government agencies looking at compliance with state and federal laws. The auditors looked at the city's utility billing, the money it spent, how money it received was recorded, and the process it purchased services. Northwest News, the State Board of Education, and the Superintendent of Public Instruction want Washington lawmakers to reconsider which tests are required for high school graduation. The new debate comes as Washington and other states are transitioning toward new high school exams connected to the new National Common Core Standards. Superintendent Randy Dorn told the News Tribune it's a fairness, the logistical, and financial issue. Meanwhile, the State Board of Education voted late last week to recommend that the legislature eliminate the biology test as a requirement for high school graduation. An unusually early snowfall makes for sledding fun on Oregon's Mount Hood. Snow lovers young and old used inflatable rafts and tubes to slide down hills near the ski slopes. Resort operators say this is the earliest they've ever opened. They're hoping for one more good snowstorm before turning on the ski lifts to welcome skiers and snowboarders. The city of Seattle wants to get people who are on the streets onto the internet by providing free wireless access, but taxpayers would have to pick up the tab. Como's Lindsay Cohen has more on the proposal, which is getting mixed reaction. Okay. Out of a job for five years, Kenny Kaoloa now lives in a small pink colored shack in Seattle's Nicholsville, a space he shares with his wife and two dogs. The homeless camp doesn't even have electricity, but Kaoloa says if he had access to the internet, it could be the light he's looking for. But now it's the 20th century, you can do everything all over the internet, you can do your application, your resume, and just hopefully they give you a call. That's what the city council is hoping for, too. Earmarking $100,000 in next year's proposed budget for improvements to the city's homeless camps. Part of that money would be used to establish internet access there. We're no longer looking at internet as a luxury. We have to make sure that we provide humane services for everybody. City council member Shama Sawan recognizes not everybody will be a fan. Start earning better paychecks. One of them is Richard Gilbert, a six-year Nicholsville resident who would rather see help for basic things like the camp kitchen. Right now, just a barbecue grill and a few tables. Well, the internet for some people is the answer. But I think more better communication is one-on-one, -on -one, face to face. Opponents also point out the library already offers free internet access. Whether you're looking for employment like Kenny. I've been out of a job since 09. Or not. That people who have unlimited access to all these services, including internet access, are not in the position to say that somebody else should not have it. Would you live without it? And that's going to do it for us here at I-501 News. We want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow.